mean, I'm stunned by the whole experience. I mean, we're at Lincoln Center. I mean, it's stunning. It's my favorite opening night I've ever had. I've done five shows, Sleepwalk With Me, My Girlfriend's Boyfriend, Thank God for Jokes, the new one, and now The Old Man in the Pool, and yeah, it's my favorite one I've ever done. Mike's first idea for the show was he wanted to do a swimming pool on stage, and the show was going to start with him swimming laps in a real pool. And we actually sorted all that out, and we figured it out, and we had worked out this wonderful magic trick to make him magically disappear out of the pool at the end of it. And once we had that all figured out, he said, you know what, I think we can do something simpler. So what we did instead is this big wave, but it becomes this sort of metaphysical thing hanging over him is, is really the, the power and the strength of it. It's both kind of beautiful and slightly ominous at times. It's kind of theatrical abstraction at its best, I think, and that, that's the fun of doing it and the joy of doing it, that Mike's words are what transforms it from one thing to the next. He's so incredible, and uh, I'm so excited to see it. I've seen it a few times, but you know, like, this is really something. I'm excited, because uh, I'm a big Mike Birbiglia fan. You know, more than just a comedy thing, he's always telling a really, really interesting, usually emotional story. There's nobody else like him, so I'm excited to, excited to see it. Halfway home, I stop at a, a rest stop to pee. I don't mean to be graphic, this is just what happened. There was blood in my pee. I know, how do you think I felt? Uh, I knew it could mean like five things and three of them mean I die and the other two aren't exactly a trip to the Bahamas either. And so I get home like 2.30 in the morning, I woke up my dad, I told him what happened. He, he had a very grave look on his face because he's a doctor, so he knows about the Bahamas. I'm able to learn from the people I'm working with. So when I work with Tom Hanks, I learn from him as an actor. When I work with Taylor, I learned from her as a director. And Tom Hanks came and saw the show, which was wild, and we made a TikTok together, which is even strange. I have to be honest, sometimes it's a little, it's a little annoying when people do my bits to me, but... Hey, and you might get back at donuts. You Joey back at donuts. You, back, you Joey back at donuts his brother, right? Hey, you're all right. You're a good guy. Hey, hey he's a good guy, all right? This is Mikey back at donuts. He's a good guy. He was listening to my comedy albums and he would do a bit to me from the comedy album on set. Like, we'd be in this fake neighborhood in this movie called Man Named Otto that comes out at Christmas. I'm Beppo! You want to see a trick? Yeah! Could I borrow a coin? What did you do? Henry back to the corner! The thing about his shows is that they're so funny and also so moving, heartwarming. There's some deep level of philosophy behind everything he's doing. Maybe he's a genius. I think Mike's work is like both so funny and incredibly deep. He has captured that that sweet spot between having a deep, well thought out act, but delivered with the almost boyish, childish innocence and energy. Mike has these little beats. Like he, when he performs, it's like you're listening to him at a jazz club. You hear every little breath. The strength of the writing is that he really wants it to have a depth of feeling that traditionally like comedians don't go for and yet still have a really funny line like every 15 or 20 seconds. Like there's a whole section now in the beginning of the show that came out of a conversation that he and I had the moment when he talked to his parents and, and his mom was like, you're gonna be fine. And his dad, who's a doctor, a surgeon, is like, no, you really might not be fine. And what that was like to hear it. He got diagnosed with cancer and really realized he might die. And, and I think that for a comedian to be thinking through, like, how do I sell the feeling of that? I think it's part of what makes his work so special. And I read this and I thought, maybe this is what I have. And I still didn't see a doctor. Life is so absurd. These bodies we're in are so absurd. And if I share that absurdity with the audience and they're able to take that away, fantastic.